Their power surrounds us and it penetrates us and we can't see them, but we are definitely affected by their presence. They bind the galaxy together. I'm not talking about the force though, duh. Black holes! Hey everyone, I'm here with Chung Pei Ma from the University of California, Berkeley, and we're gonna finally answer the question, what the heck are supermassive black holes? A black hole is black right. because even light cannot escape its huge gravitational attraction. What exactly is that black hole made of? So black hole is actually very simple. It's made of mass, but the mass had been collapsed by gravity to a point. Okay. So it's the ultimate uh, a fatal attraction mm. of gravity. And when it comes to black holes, there are different sizes, obviously. We've got a regular stellar mass black hole, and then we have the supermassive black hole. Uh, is it a continuum, or is it really just these two groups? Great question. We're still trying to answer that, uh, that question. Uh, we do know that the, the puny, the little ones, the stellar mass black holes, those are better understood. They are the end state of a star. Okay. Stars are like people, they were born at some point, they age, they go through midlife crisis, and they die eventually. Uh -huh. Now, a very massive star, stars more massive than our sun, will die as a supernova explosion, spectacular death, and what's left behind will be a black hole. But those black holes typically have, you know, 10 times, 20 times the mass of our sun. Uh, so those, we have some evidence for that. But the ones we'll be talking about today are called supermassive black holes. Yeah. And these are millions to, today we'll talk about 17 billion times the mass of the sun. That's a and lot. These tend not to be uh, found at random places, rather they seem to be lurking at the centers of every galaxy. Okay, so we've got one at the center of our galaxy as well, the Milky Way, Sagittarius A, I believe. Exactly. And so how massive is this kind of supermassive black hole? Well, again, that's another question we're trying to answer, but the one at the center of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, as you said, uh, is, has a mass of four million suns. We, we use sun, mass of the sun as a unit. Uh -huh. uh, and it sounds huge compared to these stellar graveyards, but compared to this spectrum of supermassive black holes, it's one of the smallest ones. Oh, man. How is it? that they come into the center of a galaxy. Does the galaxy form around the black hole or is it kind of, kind of together? Like, how does that work? Again, this is a, you know, chicken egg is a, is a great current question. Uh, we believe they seem to evolve together. Yeah. And they are so massive that they tended to sink towards the center of galaxies. And galaxies are very dynamic things. So galaxy, galaxy, you know, two galaxies will come together and merge to form a bigger galaxy, uh, and the, their individual central black holes will merge to form a bigger black hole. Mm -hmm. So by studying this connection between black holes and galaxies and how galaxies uh, cluster, you know, distributed in space, it allowed us to understand what the universe is actually made of. Let's go back to kind of your recent research. We've got this supermassive black hole that you've talked about. Can you tell us a bit about what you found out about these, these ma supermassive black holes? So we know that these supermassive black holes lurk at centers of galaxies. Another piece of information we had before was that more massive black holes live in more massive galaxies. Bigger things tended to live in bigger places. So we have been targeting, we wanted to find the most massive black holes nearby. Uh, so we've been looking at the centers of very massive, big, luminous uh, galaxies. Mm -hmm. So the one we found uh, recently, um, we were able to measure its mass, and it measures at 17 billion suns. What are the characteristics of that versus something that would be, I guess, a smaller supermassive black hole? Although we shouldn't get too scared by it, uh, there is this very definite region in space around the black hole is called the event horizon. Yeah. And that is a artificial boundary, it's not some surface you can touch. Within that radius, even light cannot escape, therefore a black hole is black, as I said earlier. And the bigger the black hole is, the larger the event horizon. Mm -hmm. So for a 17 billion solar mass black hole, uh, the size of the event horizon is about the eight times the uh, Pluto's orbit. Oh, man. So another way to think of it is if we were to put this giant black hole at where the sun is, yeah. you would not want to get close to 
within eight times Pluto's orbit. So if wow. we, you were at Earth's radius, we would be, would be pretty, pretty bad fate. Yeah, it'd yeah. be crunchy. Crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you want to know more about black holes, make sure you send her a note. You can also find out more about black holes in our D News Plus episode, where astrophysicist Ian O'Neill and I talked about how we're going to spot them, how they work, and if they can be used for anything, which they can, by the way. Please subscribe so you get all of our episodes. Let us know down in the comments if you have any specialists that you want us to bring on, and thanks for tuning in.